What's good, YouTube and Twitch? We're live to both right now with a setup you might not be used to. Tabletop coming back soon. No sooner than, uh, December 31st, question mark? No, it'll be before. But, on topic, Dual Power has just dropped, and it's being argued as one of the biggest impacting TCG sets of all time among all TCG sets, if... They don't mess with it too much with the short prints like Kaiba Collection and other elements we've seen. I think there's so much going on for this set that it cannot be a Kaiba Collection 2.0 in terms of we have so many new cards, we have Reigns imports, we have 40 cards we don't have in the TCG, and so many announced already are amazing. And then we also have high impact, uh, it, this is like you just mixed the Megatons, you mixed the Kaiba Collection and Legendary Collections, you mixed it all together with Reigns Pack. You pulled out all the stops, Battles of Legend even, you mixed it all together in one pot, and you created this set. It is unprecedented, and it's crazy. What do you guys think, Open Chat? One at a time, if you can. Uh, yeah, I definitely think it's shaping up to be one of the best sets of the year. We're not even in 2019 yet. I've noticed that they're really trying to, like, put all the big guns in the spring quarter. Like, last year, we had Legendary Collection Kaiba, and that was a really hyped set. Then the year before that, we had, um, all the announcements for Battle, Battles of Legends. So I feel like they're really starting to get the year off strong and make up for some of the pitfalls of the last year as far as sealed. Yeah, I think a, a huge thing to note here, starting out, is the perfect niche between... And this is goes for any set that does this. You have something for the collectors, you have something for the casuals, and you have something for the competitors. You have everything going on in this set, and that's where the hype comes from. Everybody in the community has something in here, along with the six Alter Art cards. Like, every incarnation of Stardust has gone back up over time. I, I think that's pretty cool to note. So, like, having that guaranteed in the set should finally put a little coolant on that, but over time it could just be $3 again at some point. I was honestly really happy with the alternate arts. Yesterday we got the uh, Lost Art promos announced, and I was honestly really upset that they didn't just do those. And I was trying to I like, saw that the post. Reason? Like, like, why would they not import it? There's six for each month, but now it just makes perfect sense why. Yeah, I saw that post, we and I was we like... We should have seen the signs. Yeah, I was like, yeah. but I, Well, I got... Okay, seeing the signs is hard to say, because when you go through Konami's past, a lot of alter arts take forever. Let's, let's give Firewall just for an example. The fastest reprinted card in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! history in the OCG in just, was it five or six days? Versus, we still don't have the alter art over a year later. You know? Big uh, difference. Another alternate art like three months after that. To make matters worse. Yeah, yeah, it has multiple alternate arts. And so, like, you, you look at stuff like that, uh, TCG versus OCG, and it's just so blaringly different. Uh, the the Red Dark Magician, there's another one. <laughs> Is that, like, a decade for us? Uh, Kevin Tuart didn't run in the TCG until, like, 2015. That would confuse the casuals. Man, there's already like, Blue Dark Magician thing. and Pale Dark Magician. What <laughs> Red Dark Magician? By God. But yeah, that's. I, I think we have different kinds of, like, we have unexpected standards, I feel like, as a TCG front as a whole. So, like, this set blows everything, period, out of the water upon, like, our, our first initial reaction to it, right? Well, exactly. another thing is, are they going to reprint it to death? Are they going to reprint it to death? Uh, that's a good question. That's actually very valid. So, like, usually a Legendary Collection will get its first ad run an unlimited run, and then somewhere a couple of years down the road, it'll it'll just pop up again. Like, Legendary Collection 2 right now is on shelves at Target and GameStop, etc. Like, it's popped up for its third time. Oh, and it also had Raw Yellow Mega Pack, of course. So they reprinted in a different packaging and foiling the same set. And then, the, yeah, so Legendary Collection 2 has been printed, like, how many different times if you count Raw Mega Packs? Jesus. That's, that's a good mean? point. To me, this set sounds like one of those like sets that you'll be able to bank off for a really long time. Because, like you said, it appeals to all three demographics. Like, it's not really like time exclusive either. So, like, even I think in like 2020 or 2021, there would still be merit to buying this product. So, like, well, the, what we're saying is more. though, in 2021, will this be back on shelves from Konami's hands again? Honestly, yeah. I can very well see it being like that because they've already proven like time and time again that the anime products, like the legendary collections for GX and even like the original ones with like the original six booster packs, like people love nostalgia and stuff like that. So having all the anime packs, like, will be a big factor in that. 
yeah, let me be pretty clear, stream. So a discussion that was here before this, this is to us kind of legendary collection in disguise. Like what they took they took legendary collection for Kaiba collection and boiled it down to a hundred cards, and they're continuing the exact same theme. All ultra rail all ultra rares and a hundred cards. So it's very reminiscent of what we just got a year ago, which is where the short print questions come into play. And I actually think for once, short prints might not matter that much with how much they're freaking giving us. Like, I detest the practice in general, but I think it might not matter for this specific product. Like, and that would be how they would still give the Megatons and Battles of Legend value, right? I mean, if you it look at the first depends. Battles of Legend... Go ahead. Uh, Alex, so, um... go ahead. Yeah, so with the original Battles of Legend, we had cards like Minerva and uh, Cyframe Lord Omega being short printed, like short printed, like their cards in the set. It wasn't like absolutely like one at like one ash every three boxes short printed, but the set was so good and had so many valuable cards that it didn't matter. The set was already worth purchasing alone, so the short prints really got like offset by that. Yeah. Well, another thing is how many thing how many uh, boxes? Well, because the box is only going to have what the six packs in it of five cards. So how many of those are you going to need to buy? To okay, this is this is a good discussion, and, and I'm going to leave this card on top. I'm going to start stop picking bulk for just a second, chat, because I got a shirt in my hands here. So, um, cost wise, boil it down with some quick maths. A case of this will cost MSRP uh, three hundred and sixty dollars. You have thirty dollars per pack of MSRP times twelve is three hundred sixty. The average case will cost a duelist. $720, that's 12 boxes at $60 per box. So what you're looking at is, uh, one case of this is half a case of regular product, but it's way less cards. So realistically, the same cost for a duelist to go grab these, is, if they can get their hands on them, if it's like Kaiba's collection, like it's going to be out of control trying to get these. But uh, a case will cost 720 Versus, uh, like, two cases will cost 720 of this, versus the regular case being 720. So you still apply that, but you're only get, you're getting a dollar per card. So that 720 only yields 720 cards, so a lot of them, they have to be bangers. Yeah. And or speaking of bangers, the Necroz. Uh, if you, I know that's one oh, of your favorites, Alex. Oh my god. I've been wanting to build the Necroz mirror for years now, but just everything became way too expensive. Valks were like $40, Brios were 30 Like It's one of those formats that I feel everyone should try at least once. So the fact that so many people are going to have access to them and like so easily, because they're probably not going to be the most desired cards in the set. It really just, I think it's a win for people that want to play older formats. And in the off chance we start getting stuff like Shure back or Brio back to 3 like the OCG's doing, like, it might even do something oh. like one day. Who knows? Yeah, the implications. The OCG basically has almost full power Necroz. Yeah, so like, th they will do something with Necroz to continue. The set will sell itself, but they'll do something with Necroz yes. in the TCG here. Like, I see uh, probably at least Brian at coming back to three, and maybe we'll see one copy of Shirt or something. I know we're hopping around a lot, but do you think this set kind of shows that they're paying more attention to what the voice of the players? Um, it's really well, hard yes to say. And no, because, uh, sorry, uh, yes and no, you're, you're because good. to my knowledge, it's still really split on whether or not people want Necroz to ever see the light of day again. Okay, like, I think, uh, I think it's that thing where when it's gone long enough, people cheer for it. Like, now Burning Abyss used, used to be detested, right? And now people cheer when it wins, right? Like, mm -hmm. even with Naturia Beast, like, people used to hate Naturia Beast, and they're like, Yeah, Burning Abyss did it! And you'll still have the people in the comment section right now going, I freaking hate when Burning Abyss does anything, the PTSD! Like, yeah, you're gonna have a split, like, on any player base on decisions, but I think in terms of the, this, this pack being created, not the Necroz on a ban list or not, how do you feel yeah. about this pack and like other other things that we've seen more recently like uh the bandless firewall for example we thought they wouldn't do it they did it uh and they really came through like like what do you do you think they're starting to listen to the player base just a little more I, maybe i think it's more I, I think a lot better than they have in the past i'd say a couple of years I think it's part necessity, part makes the money and part is they are listening a little more i think it's a it's a combination of things I think it's really cool how they're reprinting cards for older sets. Like, we got a duo reprint last year in Kaiba, and now we're getting Necroz stuff, because that Necroz stuff is pretty expensive. I'll say this mm -hmm. on the reprinting set stuff, though, uh, on old stuff. 
sometimes it can like it's cool to make it accessible for everybody so it's like everybody can now get this a lot easier but on stuff like into the void which hasn't seen really meta play since it's reprint right like that one from being a 16 dollars card that was value on a binder for 10 years to a dollar slash less and hasn't ever recovered and it's been out for two years now so it does kind of take away some value from the players too when old stuff gets hit. There is a back and forth. I'm I'm a fan of it being more accessible to everybody, but I'm also a fan of when people have something that they value, it keeps value too. It's a it's between a rock mm -hmm. and a hard place, right? Yeah, I mean I feel at the end of the day, like the, the max rarity version, it's always gonna be have a heart like it's gonna have a place in the hearts of like petters that want like max rarity stuff. So in that sense, I feel like Putting it in a different rarity and making it more accessible doesn't necessarily detract from the collector's market to that degree. The yeah, it really does depend. Like, and Into the Void has an ultimate rare form that helps it out, but we don't have ultimate yeah. rares anymore. So, like, uh, for example, in Infinite and Permanent, the secret will hold more value naturally than this ultra rare printing, and people will say, oh, those jokes in Zodiac, the, oh, your ultra rare and permanents can't be activated from the hand will be the next meme. <laughs> so I think it ultimately Basically. really depends on the card, because like like you said, like Into the Void, it's gone from sixteen dollars to maybe a dollar, and the, I feel the Ultimate Rare still was able to hold some sort of like yeah, it held some yeah. But the ultra, but the ultra, like the original ultra, there's no reason to play that over the. But I feel like the you know if you're on a budget already, you probably didn't go highest rarity, and, and not everybody is able exactly. to afford that. Yeah. So it's like. You, you had this troll deck on Dueling Book, you wanted to finally make it in real life or regional, and you got stuck at that unfortunate timing of, oh, Battles of Legend was announced. I just spent $50. I was so, I waited so long. Yo, Takio. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, for stuff like those, like, it's sort of like a catch-22. There's always someone that's going to get affected by it, but I feel like, overall, it's in the best interest of the entire player base. Yeah, like I said, it's a rock and a hard place on the discussion, and I'm back and forth myself, like... I, I think there's certain good elements to it. And this is where, like, I wouldn't mind if the Schwartz Prince, instead of the chase cards, like, Impermanence, ended up being cards, like, Into the Void in there. I think I would live a lot happier with that. And if that's where they want to aim, weird values. Like, let's say let's say everyone's super excited for the Necroz and Impermanence. Well, what would you as a duelist here, uh, making a deck for the upcoming events, the competitive players are going to lose value with the Impermanence reprint. But would you rather, oh, like, yeah. say, Impermanence be the short print or the Necroz cards? I mean, as someone who usually tends to borrow cards before events, like, I think for a lot of people, having access to those competitive cards very easily is the way to go. Like, ultimately, yeah, it's going to really hurt the people that invest it into the cards. But at the end of the day, if we look at a reprint as a means of making sure more people have the card, I feel like it, I feel like it makes more sense just mm -hmm. to make, like, the actual desirable cards, like, easy to get. And then those, like, exclusive cards for the collectors and stuff like that. Like, Necroz, you said, make them short print. This yeah. is Professor and, and Pink, was... by the way, boys, that is talking. If you don't know who he is, check out his channel. Um... Oh, man. I, I just want to segue real quick before you keep going, uh, whoever said, um, as a professional bum who borrows decks. <laughs> same. Same. Yeah. It's rough out here. It, it's rough. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, these commons yeah. have to equal something, right, boys? All right. Go ahead. So, it, it, it's also, I would rather see the Necros as be the short prince because when you have things like impermanence, like, yeah, sure, the quote-unquote budget alternative is to get effect veiler because it does something similar but like when you have these big cards that are 60 plus dollars the most players will not even jump for them and it kind of does give them a slight disadvantage in a lot of cases yeah so but in my when opinion you start here... bringing these things down to like 10 or less dollars it's definitely a big help and it's healthier for the game overall yeah, my opinion's very similar, that I would rather see, like, uh, th these old collector cards that people have gone out to get maintain more value for original. So not only is it a different version, then it's also harder to get, because Necro's main point of value is this format is super popular, and it, it hasn't done anything since, what, Botang? Uh, topped a regional with it forever ago and, like, shocked the world. Like, you, you look at this, and, and you say... Well then, like, uh, a ton of people love to play this format, a lot of people kept it, and that's how the rare, it got expensive. You still get free shots at getting these cards if these are the short prints, right? The lesser of two evils, if you will. I, again, not a fan of short printing, but since Konami's gonna do it, Konami's gonna do it, let's maybe 
push them in a direction to where, hey, hey, could you could you do that to the Necros and not the Impermanence? Or do we need Impermanent mm-hmm. short printed to give value to Megatons later? And this is just an extra free chance at it because the set is so awesome already with all the imports. And I don't necessarily think that if we make it permanent, it's easy to get that it's actually from the Megatons. I mean, look at Ash Blossom last year. We had it in Legendary Collection Kaiba, and then a few Ooh. months later we got it in Valhalla, but both were still around the same price. Ash is the missing link. You're were, right. You're right. They were also super Because the Ultra is still higher rarity. Sets. Yeah, exactly. So they're still married to getting that because you're getting a higher rarity version of the card that's slightly more expensive. All right, one second, keep going. I'm going to turn the music back on and quit on the computer. You know, because, like, at the end of the... Ash. Uh, I was trying to buy Ashes, like, today, and they just kept on going up from where they were. It was ridiculous. Like, I bought one yeah. for 23 euros uh, a month ago, and now they're 30. Well, I think another possible reason that they've that they've gone up since this announcement today is now we basically know we are not getting an Ash reprint in a structure deck. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I mean, when does that structure deck come out? I don't know that it's even announced for us yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, the second week of February, I think, right after YCS Chicago. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, I was I was actually going to ask you about that earlier because someone brought it up in the chat. Cause... Getting this confirmed for the spring mean we're not getting into the structure deck. Okay, so uh, we already figured, I think as a player base, we wouldn't get it by past history mm-hmm. of hand traps not being in structure deck. Like, yeah, Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? Like, where is sub- and, uh, and Droll were both in structure decks that were taken out uh, when they came over here. Yeah, Maxi yeah. in its original, like, uh, not the ancient gear, but like the dragon one uh, a while back. It wasn't in there for us where it was the OCG. It was so like, originally in the Blue Eyes one for the OCG. Yeah, that's what I meant yeah. by Dragon. So, like, you, you mm-hmm. go by older examples, and we can see Konami has a habit of taking that one card away from us and putting it somewhere else like this. They, they also know that they can make more money from the TCG players by limiting the circulation of hand traps because of how impactful they can be. Yeah, uh, the the short print Euro versus TCG was very interesting on Kaiba's collection. I'm wondering mm-hmm. also if it will be different between the two for this, as I no longer have a source to know for the EU. Well, I guess I do have a source for the EU, but it'll be late. Or not for you, uh, uh, This set this comes out before the WCQ, doesn't it? Yeah, this this comes out before basically national season, as mm-hmm. I know it. It comes out, uh, isn't it? April? Profess. Is it early April? It's April, April 4th. April. The first week of April. Oh, uh, no. Do you think... Uh, <laughs> April 1st, they announce it's an April Fool's joke, boys. You know, uh, do you think all of these these reprints of these money cards, you know, Ash, uh, Ghost Bell, Impermanent, stuff like that, since we are in kind of a lull in the, uh, the competitive season right now, do you think it'll cause more people to sell their copies of those cards right now, knowing that we're three or four months away from it, getting it a reprint? It depends. Uh, I think people it, will buy them yeah. up who need their invites along this competitive season. The market always heats up. It's very weird, right? The market always heats up in February and, and heading into March as we usually get a ban list around this time and the no sooner than also expires around this time. So I'm thinking after Chicago, we'll see our no sooner than happen unless they announce it like a week before and then say it kicks into effect by like like I'm pretty sure Chicago will be under this same list and it will be the last one of this list. Yeah, because it's like Savage Strike is the key. Yeah. yeah. So like, uh, as as someone who as someone who need or needs to get their invite and has a regional in three weeks, uh, I could for sure I'd I'd love to see impermanence dip to like seventy sixty five dollars. From everyone selling off their copies. Well, I also uh, think that people work, learned from. But... A- I think people learned from Ash Blossom that it might not be so smart to just immediately sell out your copies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a tendency as a player up. base to actually learn. Uh, I got punched in the face before. I don't want to get punched in the face before. Like again. Like I, I don't want oh. that to happen to me twice. Yeah. yeah. What about the players that once they have the cards, they just keep them forever? Those exist, but they're not a huge impact on the market. I mean, that's that's not, you know, they, they make that choice themselves. Because you're talking about, oh no, three less copies of Ash Blossom in circulation. Whatever am I going to do? Exactly. Like, it's 
it's not the biggest deal. That doesn't impact. Like that's that that impact is the same as it always has been. That doesn't change, you know. Yeah. It's a constant, basically. So, um, it's it's very. Let's let's segue a little bit away from the short prints and go into talking about the imports here. We got a, a couple of brains pack cards from one and two. We we see some mention of a a brains pack two. Do you mm. think this will be the only one from brains pack two? I doubt uh, it'll be the only one. I doubt it'll be the only one. I'm just hoping that they didn't leave needle fiber off of there for a reason. Uh, I feel uh, okay. So the, the whole deal. argument is Savage Strike is the synchro set. We'll see it in Savage Strike. Well, so mm. realistically, we'll have to like see. My my theory is uh, here's everybody's got a theory, right? But this is my channel. Yeah. Gosh dang it! Uh, my theory is we will see Needle Fiber in Savage Strike. Uh, it will be its only event with Summon Sorcerers. Summon Sorcerers will have been in everybody's hands, including the EU now for three YCSs because you'll have. Uh, Milan, Australia, and then Chicago. Uh, they'll axe summon sorceress here, and then we'll be with needle fiber only where and without firewall too. So he won't be the problem he was. Won't be as big a problem, but I'm sure it'll still be. A, it'll be like electromite, you know, like yeah, it'll be it'll a, be like a problem, but not the biggest in the world. Mm -hmm. But a a problem. I think we. So might, I feel that we're actually. It, it, Go ahead. Go ahead. So I feel like we're actually able to look forward with what might be in Savage Strike, because if you're unfamiliar with the OTS pack, uh, the Portuguese version of the set has been getting additional commons that we don't have in the rest of the territory, like the other territories. And in the Portuguese version, there are actually six scrap reprints. And that seems really bizarre to me. It doesn't indicate maybe a scrap link in, like, or, uh, in Savage Strike, rather. Yeah. So I think with, with mm -hmm. that in mind, they're going to progressively start, like, Doing what they've been doing with Link Pack or Link Brains Pack One, where they import two to three every mainstream set, and this is going to be met as sort of a way of like compensating for the rest of those slots going away, and, and basically just getting us up to speed. And then they'll tail it off to where they use it to uh, sell some side sets too, like Alistair. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That so makes for sense. so for Savage Strike, um, we're probably going to get more TCG exclusives. If Needle Fiber's in there, do you think we might get a Danger Tuner? I'm I'm I, I have actually not seen a single advertisement for Danger yet. They uh, they have it, has anybody? I haven't seen anything regarding Danger. Danger already has I, twelve cards, and it seemed like it was yeah. actually it, it kind of inherently is a danger <laughs> to the future card creation of the game, which Konami tends to not like to do. So I'm yeah. I'm most concerned that Danger's done. I'd be I fine with that. About over. I think that we might potentially see maybe a couple more Thunder Dragon cards pop up, but like uh, those two archetypes are probably just about done. We won't really see anything new regarding them anytime soon. So the thing is, they mentioned multiple Valkyrie cards instead of just the one where it was like with the Neos in their uh, yeah. advertisement on the site. That was interesting. Mm hmm. So basically, I think they want that set not to be useless, and they might give it a real hard push. Like, it already suffered from UA Syndrome. It needs a couple more normal summonable monsters, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what they give them. But like I said, I haven't I haven't seen an advertisement of Danger where they did advertise the Danger the last two times. So it's, it's increasingly interesting to me to see that. Like, I wonder well, if that's gone. I wonder if it's going to be something else, like more Noble Knight. Well, didn't we In get, like, more the, for higher. Actual, the actual knowledge of the dangers, like, only two weeks before Soul Fusion? Yeah, dropped? but they still advertised that it would be in the set. Versus oh. they're not advertising that now. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah, so that's my main concern. Like, we don't, we, we never know what TCG exclusives are until they end up leaked. Or uh, odd, odd enough, they gave, what, to Game Informer or something? The Thunderbird? Like, that was one of the weirdest leaks we've had. Yeah, it was like it was either Game Informer or IGN. I don't remember. All right, well we've we've I'm gone sure. off we've gone off track a little bit through these. How about the the jump imports here? We got a lot of them. I've been crying. I've been crying, boys, for a World Superstars two, and this fills that void really well. We've got like Security Dragon, Cyber Dragon, Nasher. We got a lot of stuff uh, coming. It looks like from the jump promos. Mm -hmm. I I really hope that uh, the Trickstar 
monster is going to be there. <laughs> As a trickster player, it would just be nice to have it. Yeah, I, I think, like, I wonder how many slots will be dedicated to it, like, uh, but 40, 40 cards is a pretty good measuring stick and seeing so many jump promos already. Security Dragon was one that I was waiting for that other people didn't want early on, but now it's like, is it used much in the OCG still? I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's with, kind of like, uh, it was Grinder Gold and Loopy, but then, yeah. like... Especially now that Firewall is gone, Security Dragon Even, is yeah. not nearly as good. With, with how arrows are today, in today's game, it's arrows kind of became a little obsolete compared yeah. to others. Not really. I think it's more important that we're actually getting them, though, not from whatever they are. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to see things sooner instead of later, and I'd, uh... I wouldn't mind a set that does more imports than concentrates on reprints for a second set like this in a year. Like, I know we're also concentrating on, like, sets like how, uh, what was it, the Valkyrie set? Had a lot of TCG exclusive changing cards that didn't do too much for us. But, uh, it's like, uh, you know, instead of a set like that, I'd like to see maybe another, like, importish set like this that's not as strong on the reprint spectrum. Well, I also think the fact that this is really strong on the reprint spectrum, and of course they don't want to hurt the value of the tins, is that it might be hopeful that we do get some more meta-impactful cards with the next few sets. Other than, like, you know, Needle Fiber or whatever we're uh, projecting, wherever things are going to show up. But, like, maybe more... Not cards that are like Dangers, but cards that are like Dangers in the sense that they actually come in and they can actually take over the meta. Hmm. Because they're gonna definitely want to have those for. The so game. you're like, the, you, we can randomly say, all right, we don't want to be the OCG format. Let's throw in a Burning Abyss of Cosmo. A day, you, that, I get what you're saying, a, an archetype that shakes things up compared to what we expected mm -hmm. was coming. Yes, I think that's plausible. All right, so like these imports, it's nice, it's it's awesome. I I this is like one of the first times like everything that I've been complaining about as a player so far, so far the minus. Uh, the short prints that are probably sure to come, unless they battles of legend us and just give us everything. Uh, this is this is nice. Uh, it's one of the first times I can sit back and not have a big complaint, like uh, you know. And now I'm excited to see what else is there. I want sub terror guru. Gosh dang it! Oh man, like is there any chat chat? Let me let me ask chat that's not just open chat. What are some imports that you're hoping for in here? Uh, let me know. I, I want to see. Yeah, uh, and like okay, so that's a good point. So we're getting Link Reigns two pack at least one card in here. The good thing that Link's Reign pack two did was limiting a lot of the cards to being more archetype slash. Uh, locking them in to where they should be mm. rather than making them crazy generic and break the game. Uh, Black Luster oh, yeah. Soldier, I think, is like one of the only super generic-ish cards? Question mark? Versus like uh, any everything else. Like uh, in Brains Pack 1. They did a really good job of locking things in. I think the only like one of the few generics in Link Brains Pack 2 was the Cyframe Link. Yeah. But you still need to play Cyframes to get the advantage, you know. Mm -hmm. Not the hardest thing in the world to do. Raid Raptors, where's it's... my Raid Raptors? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of anxiousness on when we'll get to Reigns Pack 2, so it'd be nice to see more than one import. It's weird that they mention one of the weakest ones, although Thunder Dragons are somewhat hyped, so maybe they're like, this is what the cool kids will want, this is top of events, here's the Thunder Dragon Link Monster. I could see it. <laughs> I could see yeah. that. Who cares about the Scrap Link and Raid Raptor Link? We got the Thunder Dragon Link for you guys coming. <laughs> I could see that. I it, it might just be me. I'd like to see the Fire Fist Link. Hey, just because I... Just as me really liking Fire Fist. I think everybody's going to have different tastes. I, I think everyone's going to yeah. have a little different taste on the Link Brains Pack 2 since they're not as impactful as one to where they want to see things and why they want to see things. Uh, Ooh, secret hidden Necroz link. You guys will never expect that. <laughs> yeah, TCG exclusives. All I don't think there will be a single TCG exclusive in this no, set. I would, I'd be super surprised. They don't need it to sell it. Like, this set, the altar arts, good. The collector's cards, good. The casuals, happy. The competitors, happy. Uh, any closing out words or anything we didn't cover, chat? We'll finally get the pure Code Talker monster that's a link to 
Oh. Because he was a promotional oh, yeah. card, and we've never actually gotten him yet. Good point, good point. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it was mentioned, but maybe the altar arts for Borrow... Uh, what's it called? Borrow Load. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that the Borrow oh, Load yeah. would be an altar art since it was in the set. I was thinking that. And it mentioned Holly Angel as well, which is another altar art. Yeah, that's the, specifically that's I was like that's a pog like why are you mentioning that? But it started to make sense. I came to the same conclusion. And I'm, maybe even Firewall. I've been screaming about that for a while. Where's Borlode's altar? It became kind of a meme with my stream. Like John thinks Borlode's coming. I don't think we'll see the Firewall al altar art in that set probably. <laughs> yeah, they, because Firewall's well, banned. But wait. Uh, They'll Pug. sneak him it, in somewhere. It, it comes in with the errata in this set. Got him. <laughs> They'll sneak the altar art in somewhere. <laughs> Firewall banned. Altar art errata fixed. Here you go, player base. One Put it in a structure deck. <laughs> Limited only to Cybers monsters. They called the code the ace. They called the code the ace. That's from Konami. They did. They, did. they, they really quickly uh, changed the lore there. I like it. Was it changed though? Because Firewall had only shown up like four times in the anime versus the Code Talkers were like everywhere. Well, from what they previously said that Firewall is the ace monster, they they eroded their own lore. <laughs> well, yeah, the text wise, it made sense. All right, chat. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, any final notes? Any? Any at all? Uh, please give good. Uh, Peace and love. All right, guys. If you enjoyed the discussion. Be sure to like the video and show up for these live streams. You can take part it, it, as long as you got a decent mic and headphones to plug in so you don't reverb back in. I'd appreciate having you here on these live streams. And uh, yeah, subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.